bit you might not know. Termites never ever sleep. I mean ever. We build our colonies 24 hours a day every single day until we die. Can you imagine never sleeping once in your whole life? It's hard for me to imagine how you humans can spend one-third of your lives sleeping. I mean 
Really? What a waste of time when you could be building, eating, finding new food sources, or taking care of your house. I'll be honest with you though, even though we work all the time, literally all the time, sometimes it feels like we'll just never get it all done. I'm guessing you humans can relate to that feeling too. Here's a fun fact. Did you know that we termites are fabulous farmers? We don't grow corn or stuff like that. We grow fungus. Here's a little secret to our success. Our colony mounds are so amazing. They are our houses and our farms. The air is a little sticky and humid inside, but the humidity is perfect for raising top-notch fungus. That fungus and all our busy work puts off some, well, unfortunate smells and gases. pee You might relate to that, too. But that's the beauty of our amazing mounds. They're designed to vent out all those bad gases, which keep us safe and healthy. How amazing is that? I love the way God thought of everything we would ever need. He always takes care of us, making sure we have what we need to live. He's pretty awesome that way. God takes care of you, too. In the Bible book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 31, it says, If God is for us, who can ever be against us? In the Bible, a man named Moses saw something unusual one day. Nope, it wasn't a sticky termite mound. It was a burning bush that, well, didn't burn up. God talked to Moses from the burning bush and gave him a big job to do, much bigger than eating wood like us termites. Even though Moses wondered if he was good enough, God promised to take care of Moses and help him. Do you ever feel like you can't possibly keep up with everything? Or wonder if you're good enough to make it through a challenge in front of you? Here's what's true. God takes care of you. You don't have to be perfect. God loves you even when you fall short. Wow, look at the time. I have to get going. My colony mates are relying on me to get more work done. So for now, I'm over and out. God takes care of us. Hi, everybody. It's Miss Kelly from church. How are you? First of all, happy Valentine's Day. Oh, I wish I could see you today. But, um... We're still in this mode where we're doing Sunday School virtually, so I will keep you posted when we can come back face-to-face. -face. Um, I look forward to that day, as I'm sure you guys do too. Um, but today, we are going to continue our story of Moses. Last week, we talked about Moses as a baby who was rescued by the Pharaoh's daughter. So even in last week's message, God had a plan for Moses, and while Moses as a baby was vulnerable and couldn't do things for himself, God sent help. And he does that for us each and every time we ask. So this week's lesson is all about Moses as an adult. And God asked him to do some very important work on his behalf. Um, and you're going to see throughout this story that there are times when Moses doesn't feel like he's good enough or capable enough or speaks well enough to do what God has asked him to do. And I know that in our lives, some of us feel like that at least, well, often. We feel like that often. And what we need to know about that is that God is always with us. So where we fall short or feel we fall short, God picks up the pieces. He's with us and he won't ask us to do anything that he knows we aren't capable of doing. So with God, we can all do great things. So I want you to remember that. Um, and I don't, you know, we all have insecurities and feel like we aren't enough sometimes. But with God, if we have faith and we pray and we trust that he is by our side, we never have to worry about that. So that is what I want you to get from this week's lesson. There is a movie and then there's a quiz. 
I hope you all have an amazing happy Valentine's Day and I look forward to the time when we can be together again. Take care you guys. I'll see you soon. Bye bye. decided to take his flock of sheep to the far side of the wilderness for Mount Sinai. Though this journey was unfamiliar to his sheep, they trusted Moses. For more than 40 years, Moses had learned the confidence and compassion of a good shepherd. He led and protected his sheep. God was using Moses' time as a shepherd to prepare him for an incredible task. Moses was going to lead God's people out of slavery and into As Moses led his sheep, they eventually came to a canyon near the base of Mount Sinai. It was surrounded by a range of smaller hills, so it would be safe, and it had some grass for his sheep to graze. As Moses searched the area for wolves and other dangers, he noticed off in the distance a large bush covered in flames. Moses rushed toward it. As he neared the bush, he could see that it was burning, but the fire did not destroy it. Alarmed and curious, Moses moved even closer. Suddenly a voice came from the bush. Moses! Moses! Do not come any closer. Take off your shoes, because the place you are standing is holy. Moses fell back in awe and did as the voice commanded, taking off his sandals and bowing low. Moses gave this strange and wonderful sight his full attention, and the voice continued to speak. I am the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. God speaking to me? Moses trembled and did not dare to look at him. The Lord God continued, I have seen the sorrow of my people are in bondage under Egypt's great power. I have heard their cry, and I am familiar with their pain. It is time for me to deliver them. Moses continued to listen as God spoke. Get ready. I am sending you to Pharaoh to set my people free. Long ago, Moses had dreamed of helping but so much time had passed, and Moses was uncertain. He asked, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and lead your people out of Egypt? God assured him, I am with you, and I am going to prove it by bringing my people safely out of Egypt. Moses continued to hesitate. What should I tell the children of Israel when they ask who you are and what your name is? God replied, Tell them, I am who I am, sends you. And he added, Tell them that this will be my name forever. But Moses became afraid and wondered how he could do this. The Egyptians hated him, and the Hebrews, his own people, despised him. But God assured Moses that he would go with him. Still, Moses was afraid and asked, But what if they don't believe me? God answered, Throw your staff onto the ground. Moses did as he was told, and it became a live snake. Then God ordered him to pick up the snake, and it became a staff again. God showed him another sign. Mm -hmm. Put your hand in your cloak and pull it out. God instructed him to do it again, but this time, the leprosy disappeared. It would be clear to the Hebrews and the Egyptians that God was with Moses. But Moses was still afraid, too terrified to speak to Pharaoh. I am not a very good speaker, he argued. By now, God was angry at his unbelief and reminded Moses that he, the God of the universe, had created Moses and prepared him for what he was called to do. Even so, 
God assigned Aaron, Moses' brother, to be a spokesman and to support Moses in the days ahead. So Moses returned his flock of sheep safely to their home and, with his brother Aaron, left on the great adventure. <laughs>
he would show the way.